I'm Edie Lush and I'm here at the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. Really delighted now to be joined by Chris Larson, CEO of Ripple. Tell me, how does what you're doing fit into the fourth industrial revolution? Yeah, it was a very exciting time. Uh, so much change going on. And one of those additional changes that I think will be part of this fourth industrial revolution mm -hmm. is this notion that we now have this internet of value. Uh, we're moving into a world where value, money, mm -hmm. payments is moving like information already does on mm -hmm. the on the internet, mm -hmm. and that's a big deal because until now, you know, the world is sort of a lot of siloed payment networks, country by country, or you know, Visa to M-Pesa, they don't talk to each other, and because they don't talk to each other. Everybody suffers uh, from you know the uh, poorest working class, underbanked consumer, to the thriving small business, to the biggest global corporation. They're all paying a very steep price because our world of money and payments is not interoperating, is not working as one. And we now have new technologies, whether you call them blockchain mm -hmm. or distributed ledgers or whatever we call them, bottom line is, this is the beginning of an internet of value, where value will be able to move like information, where it will move instantly, uh, basically for free, as a free infrastructure, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, that now provides access to people, whether they're in, uh, you know, in uh, growing economies in Africa, mm -hmm. or in the rich countries uh, in Europe and the U.S., uh, or in China. Um, it will give them uh, more value that they can use for their families because they will get better access to the global economy. Uh, they're simply going to be taxed less from the friction that we've had in the, in the past. And then kind of looking forward, I think you, you really see this uh, you know, almost futuristic world where, you know, here at Davos they're talking mm -hmm. about Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. Well, now layer on this Internet of Things, all these billions of cars, devices being connected. Now suddenly they are also uh, commerce connected. Mm -hmm. So things are buying, selling, mm -hmm. keeping money. Uh, you can imagine the self-driving car mm -hmm. that's paying a, an ambitious coder in Kenya mm -hmm. to upgrade its self-driving you know, systems. It's paying some embedded device in the road here in Davos mm -hmm. to use the road. And it's collecting money from consumers or maybe even other things that might want to hitch a ride in that self-driving car. Mm -hmm. So suddenly now you could argue that billions and billions of new economic participants have arrived on Earth mm -hmm. who can be taxed, who will have identities. Uh, and I think, you know, some people would say, well, that's going to put everybody out of work, I, I would argue that, you know, if they are economic actors, GDP goes up, taxes go up, you can use those taxes to help some of the people that have been left behind in left the past, behind in the past. Um, that becomes a pretty interesting world. Obviously, it's just beginning, lots mm -hmm. of things have to happen, regulation has to happen. Tell and, me about some of the regulation yeah. you think has to change in order for this to happen. What's st stopping it at the moment? Well, the big thing is just like when the internet started. I mean, again, this is the internet of value. It's just like we went through 20 years ago. And I think, you know, we all, I remember a time when the internet was mostly labeled as bad. Uh -huh. um, as a kind of a bad thing that probably had to be stopped. Mm -hmm. And it was unclear how regulators and government w were going to go on it. And actually, there was a kind of key moment in 1997. Um, uh, President Clinton introduced the uh, global framework for uh, e-commerce. Mm -hmm. And here in, in Europe, uh, the Bonn Conference in 97, kind of a key moment mm -hmm. when government decided uh, this is a good thing and we need to get behind it and support it. That's kind of what you need with this Internet of Value. We're not there yet, mm -hmm. but this notion, not just about specific laws, but about some kind of a global framework for financial technology and allowing companies to sandbox, to mm -hmm. experiment before you have to go, f you know, build huge compliance teams mm -hmm. is, is really important. But uh, it's just really important for regulators to understand a very potentially powerful good thing might be happening in here. And it won't happen without policy uh, makers, policy leaders engaging with it and actually uh, letting that happen. Uh, is very fragile right now and it will make the difference between it being 
transformational or a dud. Companies like yours are obviously challenging some of the bigger uh, players in the financial markets. <clears throat> How do you see that developing in terms of um, where financial innovation will come? And if you were to look ahead in the future of five or ten years, how big a role will banks be playing in this transfer hmm. of value? You know, I think it's really interesting discussions going on here at Davos uh, around uh, fintech companies partnering with, with banks mm -hmm. and financial institutions. And I think that's the right call. Um, because when you look at what's going on with this internet of value, it's not everything that's changing. There's a couple of really fundamental things that are improving, but there's lots of stuff in the banking world and financial institutions that's, that is, you know, been developed over hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think we want to muck with, uh, for one reason, it's just there's not a bandwidth to rebuild everything. Right. So fintech should focus on what is actually transforming mm -hmm. and then partner with the financial institutions so they keep doing what they're doing. And that's a win-win. And I firmly believe that that's mm -hmm. how this is going to have the most impact. Thank you very much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Thank Dallas. Thank you so much. And when you think about the fourth industrial revolution, this is all about the uh, web merging together with the physical web, merging together with sort of the human web, if you will. I would add another one to that, and we would call that the Internet of, of Value. So think of, uh, in terms of where we're going of billions of devices, which are not only internet connected, but actually hold small amounts of value. So they can literally be economic actors themselves. So our phones, our cars aren't just trading information. They're actually trading payments and money with uh, people and with each other and with companies. That just really opens up the scope of where our, our global economy is going. So we think this is sort of a key part of the puzzle of trying to make this fourth industrial revolution as you know, positive and productive for, for people. Right now, because the world is a series of siloed networks, you need correspondent banks in the middle as a workaround. 1140, you know, that's 1970s technology. That's what creates these uh, incredible delays in moving cross-border payments, the incredible cost, and sort of the uncertainty of what, what happened to your payment once you, once you send it globally. So that is a part that we think is fundamentally changing. However, I think the benefits of that improvement far outweigh, you know, anything that might change with the existing system and actually will provide way more opportunity, not just for new, fin you know, startups, but for the banks themselves. You can imagine a scenario where those 50 billion uh, internet connected things, devices, whatever you want to call them, uh, literally now have bank accounts and could be customers of banks. So you could argue that billions of new customers will be coming online to the players in the, in, the, in the finance stream. It's all about adopting this new technology, keeping up with change, and then reaping the benefits from it. I think what consumers, through their banks, are now going to have services where money can be sent cross-border instantly uh, at a greatly reduced costs with sort of maximum competition for the foreign exchange, for example. It's going to open up new avenues for small and medium-sized businesses, which in many ways sometimes are blocked from the global marketplace simply because of the lack of access to efficient payments. Second part, long term, you look out five, ten years in this sort of internet of value that we're going into, you know, once the exchange of value, those costs and time go to zero, you now have all kinds of new applications that simply were not possible in the old world in exactly this kind of the same way that the internet as we've known in the last 20 years, it introduced applications uh, that we could have never imagined. And that's very exciting. So uh, we think that's gonna provide all kinds of yet to be determined benefits to consumers. So there's a now impact of all the things we do today, and then there's a, a huge impact of the things we can't even dream about.